All right, I've got my red rubber bands and we're gonna um, explore the um, muscles of the shoulder a little bit. Um, looking at line of pull and origin and insertion. So the first group we're gonna look at is the scapular elevators. So hopefully it'll make sense to you that in order to elevate the scapula, we're gonna to need to have an origin that is superior and an insertion that is on the scapula. So when the insertion moves towards the origin, we get scapular elevation. So hopefully that makes sense. So um, the, the first one in the group is the upper trapezius. So um, the trapezius, of course, um, consists of three different sections, upper, middle, and lower. And we're gonna um, explore each section which, with its group. So the upper trapezius, its origin is on the external occipital protuberance and the ligamentum nuchae, which is up here. And we don't have the ligaments, but they'd be right here. And then the, um, they insert on the lateral third of the um, clavicle and the acromion process. So the insertion, is, we've got this broad insertion here. Hopefully you can see that. Going up to this, um, the origin here. So when, and we've got a fairly vertical line of pull um, with a little bit um, medial to lateral. So that it's going to elevate when the muscle shortens, you see it's going to elevate the scapula. Um, it can also, if we have reversal of muscle function, um, it can do side bending um, for the head. Um, it also works in the group with upward rotation, and we'll talk about upward rotation separately. Um, so I'm going to zoom in on the skeleton a little bit more. There we go. Okay, this is the first time I've done this with the rubber bands and the muscles, so it's an interesting experiment. So the next muscle in the elevator group is the levator scapula, and its name, levator scapula, it elevates the scapula. So it's deep to the um, upper trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid anteriorly. Um, so it attaches, its origin is the transverse processes of C1 through C4. So we're going to be on these transverse processes, and it goes down to the superior angle of the scapula. So you can see it has that pretty vertical line of pull um, for scapular elevation. So if that muscle is to, sh um, to shorten, we're going to elevate the scapula. It has the reversal of muscle function for side bending and rotating the neck to the same side. You can see if we rotate to the same side, the muscle shortens. If we rotate to the opposite side, the muscle lengthens. So hopefully you can see that. And the side bending is um, hopefully fairly obvious. So the next muscle in the um, elevator, or the last muscle in the elevators group is the rhomboids. So the rhomboids, just like their name says, they're a rhomboidal <laughs> muscles in shape. So they have this fairly broad attachment um, fairly broad origin and insertion. So the ligamentum nuchae and the spinous processes of C7 through T5. So this is C7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I um, put my rubber band around here, well then the, the lower attachment, I have to take his sombrero off. It's not in the way. Okay, get that out of the way. Okay. <laughs> So attaching to um, the, the lower attachment attaches to the um, vertebral or medial border of the scapula, and you can see that rhomboidal shape. You can also see that the line of pull is medial to lateral and a little bit um, vertical. So it's a, sort of an oblique line of pull giving you scapular retraction and elevation, and it also um, functions in the force cu uh, couple for downward rotation, which we'll look at in a minute. Okay, so that's rhomboid, and there's major and minor, but we're going to talk about them together. And the levator scapula and the rhomboids have similar um, motions, similar lines of pull. So the rhomboid is here. Let me get it around those um, spinous processes get it to stay. <laughs> so the rhomboid is there, the levator is there. So you can see similar angles, similar lines of pull. 
makes sense. They do similar actions. The rhomboid, of course, doesn't attach um, high up on the cervical spine, so you're not going to get those reversal of muscle functions um, that uh, the levator scapula has. So we talked about the scapular elevators. Now we're going to talk about the scapular depressors. Um, they are the lower trapezius, the latissimus dorsi, pec minor, and the subclavius. So the lower trapezius attaches, um, it's a fairly big muscle. The whole trapezius itself is a fairly big muscle. It's, um, I'm going to make sure I have a stretchy enough rubber band. <laughs> its uh, origin is the spinous processes of T6 to T12. So way down here. See, one, two, three, four, five. That's T12. Okay, I'm going to count my vertebrae. Um, and then its insertion is on the spine, the root of the scapular spine, on the medial side of the scapula. So you can see it has that downward, it pulls the um, scapular spine downward, functioning in that upward rotation force couple. Um, and it also retracts um, or depresses the scapula, so it pulls it down. It has a little bit of line of pull for retraction when it's working with the middle trapezius. The lower trapezius is one that's often forgotten because um, a lot of people have a poor posture and um, protracted and elevated scapulae, and the poor old lower trapezius is just getting stretched all the time. So um, it's um, works. It's also part of the um, force couple for upward rotation, which we'll um, investigate separately. So the latissimus dorsi, another huge muscle, very superficial on the back. It has that reversal of function for crutch ambulation that we've talked about. Um, its origin is the spinous processes of T7 through L5. So big, huge origin. I'm going to get See if I can get the rubber band around. Okay. I might not be exact on the processes just because with the skeleton it's hard to do that. So T7 is about the level of the um, inferior angle of the scapula, if you want to think of it that way. And then its insertion is the floor of the bicipital group. So it actually comes up, it goes underneath the armpit and attaches on the floor of the um, bicipital groove. So it goes, it goes from posterior to anterior. So that posterior to anterior gives it the extension line of pull when that shortens because it's pulling on the, the um, tubercle, basically the floor of the bicipital groove. It gives you the line of pull for extension. When the arm is in abduction, it gives you the line of pull for adduction. It gives you a line of pull for medial rotation because it's pulling on the floor of the bicipital groove, pulling the humerus medially. Hopefully you can see that. And of course, hyperextension, the hyperextension component of extension. The way it um, does scapular depression is it pulls on the humerus, which is attached to the scapula, and pulls the scapula down. So it can do that scapular depression even though it doesn't have a direct connection to the scapula. Um, this is also a multi-joint muscle um, and so when you elevate your arms um, you can cause um, thoracic and lumbar extension um, if it's because the latissimus dorsi is stretched over all those muscles. Okay, so the other um, uh, scapular depressor is the pec minor. So the pec minor is a pretty small muscle. We're going to turn bony 10 around so we can see it attaches to the coracoid process. Um, the insertion or the origin, I'm sorry, is on the anterior surface of the third through fifth ribs. So this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So basically it's going to attach here and its insertion is on the coracoid process. So you can see if that muscle contracts, you're going to pull the scapula down. It's a depressor. Remember, it's the eora of muscles. Scapular depression, and it's in the force couple for downward rotation, which we'll look at a little bit later. 
So the subclavius is also a, a scapular depressor because of um, where it attaches and how everything is attached. So the subclavius is little. I don't even know if I have a rubber band small enough. <laughs> so um, its origin is near the cartilage of the first rib. So it's here and the um, inferior surface of the clavicle. So I'm just going to put my little rubber band there. You can kind of imagine that the subclavius is right there. Um, it depresses the clavicle, and by depressing the clavicle, it brings the um, acromion along with it and has a little bit of a line of pull for scapular depression. Um, it also um, prevents the, scap the uh, clavicle from rotating, rolling posteriorly, which is an accessory motion for um, glenohumeral elevation. So looking at the upward rotation, so the upward rotators of the scapula um, are the upper trapezius, the lower trapezius, and the serratus anterior. So the upper trapezius we looked at it attaches along the spine of the scapula and up to the external occipital protuberance in the ligament of Nucci. And so you can see how it is going to pull the scapula this way, bringing the glenoid fossa tilting up towards the ceiling, if you want to think of it that way, tilting superiorly. The lower trapezius attaching here is going to pull down on the spine of the scapula, also causing that upward rotation because it's pulling this down. Um, and the um, serratus anterior, um, you're going to have to imagine that attaching um, anteriorly to the scapula because I can't unscrew Bony Ted's arm. And then it comes around and attaches to the ribs. It's on the anterior portion of the scapula, and it's pulling the inferior angle of the scapula anteriorly. So the um, serratus anterior is protracting the scapula. So you have the upper trapezius pulling um, the acromion process superiorly, the lower trapezius pulling the spine of the scapula inferiorly, and the serratus anterior pulling the lower angle anteriorly and that gives you that upward rotation hopefully that makes sense to you um, if it doesn't let me know we'll talk more about it so the serratus anterior it's the major scapular protractor we just looked at it its origin is the lateral external surfaces of the first eight ribs um, and the insertion is the anterior surface of the vertebral border of the scapula so it's protract, it works in, as, in that force couple for upper rotation, it prevents scapular winging, um, and it interdigitates with the um, external obliques um, on, the, on the side of your rib cage. So that's kind of, kind of cool right there. Um, so it's the only scapular protractor. So it's... If we're um, doing a push-up with a plus, that little plus part is the serratus anterior doing its job. The primary muscles involved in downward rotation of the scapula are the rhomboids, the pec minor, and the levator scapula. So let's look at those again. So levator scapula attaches to the superior um, angle of the scapula and the transverse processes of C1 through C4. So that's going to, so if the, if the scapula was rotated in upward rotation, the levator scapula pulling up on the, pulling superiorly on the superior angle is going to tilt it back down along with the rhomboids. Let's get my rhomboid rubber band. Along with the rhomboids doing, doing that sort of similar motion and, and pulling the inferior angle back towards the midline. Um, and the pec minor is pulling the um, anterior part of the scapula down, rotating it back into a downward position. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and if it doesn't, we'll talk about it in office hours.